Hi creators, I'm Anne of Anakin Creates and today I am going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Tuparka 19 piece quilling kit that you can buy on Amazon for under $20. And since it is under $20, that's one of the reasons I chose it. It also has a four and a half star rating and over a thousand reviews. So we will go ahead and open things up and see what we have in there and then I will test things out. Actually, first I wanted to note that there is also a Tuparka 15 piece kit selling for several dollars cheaper. If you are just wanting to try quilling to see if you like it and don't want to spend much, this would be a decent option. It's very similar to the 19 piece kit and I'll point out the differences in the unboxing. Okay, we have some flower guides. This is a mold. Concave on this side, sticks out on that side. Scissors, awl or quilling needle, straight pins, tweezers with a little thing, curling coach, glue bottle, slotted tool, template for making different shapes or if you want to make shapes of all the same size you can use this and the paper. Series of black to white, yellows, inks, purple, brown, yellows to oranges, blues, greens, dark red to pink. So the 15 piece kit comes with all of these and the scissors. The difference between the 19 piece and the 15 piece is that you get more paper, more variety of colors, and you get this whatever is called mold. So it did come with everything that it said it would. Now that being said, there's a customer question on the Amazon website. It says, is there anything needed that is not included in this kit? So let me tell you what you will need in addition to this kit. You're going to need some background paper or whatever it is that you are gluing onto. You might also want a tray or plate to put glue on in case you don't want to use their glue bottle for the entire time. You will also need glue. Glue is not included in this kit so you'll have to provide it yourself. So you might have noticed that there were no instructions included in the kit. Well one customer asked that very question, where are the instructions? And here is Tuparka's reply. Dear customer, thanks for your mail. This product is DIY. You can make it at will. There is no special way of explanation. You can come as you like, etc, etc. Using these items, you can easily make artworks. We will be doing that in just a second. The perfect all-in-one kit can be used to make paper quilling crafts. Hope it may help you. Thanks. Best wishes. Tessie Twist of Tuparka. So, there are no instructions, sorry. But let's get into making our artworks. I like quilling letters. So what do you say? Let's do a letter R. We will start off by putting glue in the glue bottle. I am not a fan of storing glue in there long term, so I just put in a little bit and make sure to use the cover so the tip doesn't clog with dried glue. I really love using this glue bottle for the outline. It puts out a very thin line of glue and it makes it so much easier to just glue one section at a time. I usually make outlines with cardstock. It makes for a nicely stiff outline that matches the background perfectly. You can see the Tuparka strips are definitely a bit more wiggly 
but the whites match up better than I expected. Picking out some pinks and using the slotted tool to roll up some strips to make some shapes for a rose. This is the bright green from the green color set and it is a very thin paper. But it rolls okay. It looks like I can make shapes with it just fine. But it does squish together flatter than the thicker strips, which could be a good thing if that's what you're going for. I'm using a straight pin here to roll the paper. It makes a smaller center hole than the slotted tool and you don't get that kink in the middle either. Another use for the glue bottle. Using the quilling needle to condition the end of the strips. And a not so obvious use for the tweezers. I clean up glue blobs with the quilling needle all the time. Switching to blues now. I am going to use the quilling board to make petals. And stuff that into the smallest hole. Not a whole lot of room to expand, but it doesn't matter because I want the petal to be pretty solid. But for sure, I want all the petals to be the same size. That's why I'm using the quilling board. The curling coach baffles me. Why did they have to make it look like a fat man? It feels a little funny to push a quilling tool through its head, you know? Well, remember there aren't any instructions and I don't actually have much experience with curling coaches. My best guess is that I should keep the coach directly against one side of the strip and my finger on the other. Ooh, that doesn't look good. So I don't love the curling coach. It is very awkward to use and just seems like yet another thing for my poor under fingered hands to have to deal with. Someone out there, contradict me. Tell me how you adore your curling coach. I need convincing that this is a useful tool. Not my best tight coil. But since it's already sticking out on one side, I have an idea. Let's use that mold. Make it stick out properly. So we'll try the smallest bump first. Maybe too small. Let's try the next bigger one. Nope, Goldilocks don't like it. We'll go back to the small one and push, push, push. Make it conform to the bump. Let's see how we did. Not bad. Definitely sticking up, has a rounded top. I'd say that's a success. And the final touches to complete the art work. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. Overall, I think that the customer rating on Amazon is pretty much right. I would give this product four stars out of five. Three stars because I think that the kit has a good selection of beginner tools, plus the paper strips. Another star because of the price. I think it's affordable and I think that's important for beginners if they just wanna test something out especially if you go with the 15 piece set it's significantly cheaper but if you want more strips and if you need that um, mold um, then go with the 19 piece set um, but minus one star because it's not high quality so the scissors they felt rough when they were cutting as if the blades had little tiny nicks on them it just was not smooth cutting the grip of the tweezers was not great. It was fine for holding things most of the time, but as soon as I put a strip that was glued down onto the paper, I had a hard time adjusting it. And the tweezers, they just kept slipping. 
As for the paper strips themselves, I liked the colors. I liked that the texture was smooth. Um, for the most part, you could curl it easily. You can make the shapes, no problem. Oh, the glue, it was easy to glue and you didn't have to hold it together very long before it stuck. But the paper had different thicknesses, even within the same set of colors. The really bright colors, uh, this bright yellow, this bright orange, the bright pink and green here. Those were all I found to be definitely the thinnest paper. They were very floppy. So if you were trying to quill something, um, maybe a, a more solid shape, something with some width to it, you're probably fine using those thin papers. But I would be very careful about trying to glue a single strip on edge. You might be able to get it to work, but I don't think it would make for a very sturdy final product. The medium weight paper was fine. Um, it curled just fine. You didn't have to prep the entire strip, but with the thickest paper, I found that you did have to prep the whole strip, meaning that I would run a quilling needle down the length of it. And that would just help it to curl smoothly instead of having a little bunch of small little bends. I had a couple instances where these particular yellow strips would delaminate. It's weird, you don't think about these paper strips being made of layers, but the layer would separate with these yellow strips. And I, I didn't have it happen all the time, but it did happen at least once, maybe twice. So there was some damage to some of the sets of paper. It was a, the black and white set, and then also the brown paper. But for sure the black and white set, I was very disappointed about that. I thought at first that it was like water damage, but it turns out, and looking back at the video, it was right on top of the pile of paper with tools piled on top of that. So I'm pretty sure it was the weight of the tools pushing down on the paper that caused that damage. And it's not cool. <laughs> it makes the paper look different. The color looks different, it looks off. So I would have liked to see a layer of bubble wrap or some protective layer in between the paper strips and the rest of the tools. Also, the kit only comes with five millimeter wide strips. I personally have no beef with that, it's what I would have chosen myself, but it's something to be aware of. Um, the slotted tool, I didn't notice this at opening, but it was slightly bent. So the plastic and the metal weren't quite on the same axis. So all in all, not a high quality kit, but it worked. I was able to have fun quilling. I made a nice project in the end. I think it has what most beginners would want to get started, although it would have been nice if they had included some basic instructions. So, would I recommend it? Yes, I would. Is it the best kit out there under 20 US dollars? I don't know. But its main competition on Amazon is a quilling kit by Juya. Juya? which I also bought and we'll be reviewing in the next couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. And uh, in that video, I will provide some thoughts on how these two kits compare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Of the Tuparka Shakur quilling kit. Oh, why, why, why? And I had some criteria for, I had some criteria for what um, I had some criteria for, I had some criteria, oh my gosh. <sighs>